The Greens, former Greens leader now, it's his uh, last day tomorrow, so he's uh, resigning tomorrow. So this is uh, one of his very last media conferences. No doubt there'll be something to mark the occasion tomorrow as well. But uh, this afternoon he's unveiling what he calls his last exhibit. Um, and this is about the uh, P P uh, James Price Point region in WA. So you can see Bob Brown and uh, some of his uh, media people uh, heading for the cameras there, among them Rachel Seward, who heard it from earlier today when she was talking about her disappointment with the government's announcement in relation to that, those marine parks that it's going to be setting up. There's a two-month consultation period for that government proposal. Uh, but the, well, as we heard from Tony Burke earlier today, it sounds like he's definitely keen on heading, go, going ahead with the plans as he unveiled them this morning. Uh, Rachel Seat was saying earlier today that she was disappointed that uh, there hadn't been more extensive uh, protection for some areas, and in, protection, in particular the oil and gas exploration um, that will still be allowed in some areas. So let's hear now from right. former Greens leader Bob Brown. Uh, because my... A uh, parting gift to my fellow members of parliament is this um, poster on uh, the very beautiful James Price Point here in the Kimberley. It's just north of Broome. It's a stunning place. We were over there last week. Uh, extraordinary Aboriginal heritage sites in here uh, with a living history that the men and women have uh, had passed down and will pass on. If only there's not a gas factory built across this. There's a couple of rigs off here at the moment. Um, dinosaur footprints through this mudstone. Some of these are 1.4 metres across. 31 metre long dinosaurs, herbivores, from 130 million years ago. Uh, and you can see the track where they've walked. Um, Marvellous wildlife. The whales are calving off here at the moment. The first mother and calf appeared uh, last week while we were in the Kimberley. This is no place for a gas factory. And the people of Broome turned out a thousand of them again to protest on the weekend. Uh, really across to... This is addressed to our Prime Minister and all MPs. There's alternatives for Woodside's destructive gas factory but there's no alternative for this remarkable piece of living, cultural and natural heritage of the local people, including the people of Broome, who don't want this gas factory, and the people of Australia. So across to Julia Gillard, Tony Abbott, uh, and of course Tony Burke, who can um, stop this. I've written today to the board of Woodside to ask uh, to catch up with them. Uh, well, that said, I will be sending a copy of this poster to all the members of Parliament after I've gone next week. But Rachel assures me that that job will be done. Um, I'm handing in my resignation to the President of the Senate tomorrow. Um, and that's that. The minute that resignation hits the deck, I'm ex-Senator Bob Brown. But um, I just uh, again say it's been a delight to be serving this country and the Australian Greens and all the voters of the country who want to see our heritage protected and a, and a good future secured for the last 16 years. Uh, a lot of work to be done. I'm uh, aware that just today we've got Paul Howes calling for the dismantling of the Tarkine, another magnificent wild area. Uh, John Howard protected the rainforest. Let's see Julia Gillard or Tony Abbott give it the full protection from uh, mining uh, erosion in the coming years. So much more. Uh, and this country's wealthy. It can afford to protect places like James Price Point and the Tarkine. can well afford that. And uh, I can assure you that uh, I'll be a um, retired senator uh, and a reinvigorated campaigner for these beautiful places. Uh, and I, I just uh, have enjoyed my time here and I'm looking forward to my time there. So, Have you had any second thoughts? 
Um, well, well, hindsight's a wonderful thing. And I have to tell you, I'm very happy. <laughs> so uh, that says something. Uh, no, I'm... I'm uh, uh, look at those poles for the Greens. They've gone up since I got out. Uh, quite clearly, I should have done it earlier. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, but uh, that's a tribute to Christine Milne, uh, Adam Bant and, and uh, Rachel and the whole team. Uh, and I think we're going to see more of that. Um, I'm looking forward to campaigning, Christine's there today, to campaigning for the state seat of Melbourne in the upcoming election there where the polls are so good for the Greens. And much more of that. Um, I'll be at a meeting tonight with Kate Fearman, our uh, Senate candidate for the next uh, election uh, in New South Wales. Great candidates, great future, it's all, it's all uh, there together and um, I'll be, as I said, a uh, very vigorous Green in the years to come. So you will be continuing to campaign with our Greens candidates in the lead up to next year's federal election? I'll, I'll be campaigning with the Greens candidates to the very day they put me in a box. Uh, that's that's uh, I think it's such an important alternative to the big parties who don't give security to this country's future. They've got no vision. The, the Greens have, and uh, I want to see them going well. Some people have called me uh, an elder of the Greens. Well, you know, uh, of the tree variety, I'm still very green. Um, I swing in the breeze. I get through all the winters, and I give a lot of harbour to uh, other prospective Greenies. So. Yes, I'm, you, uh, I will be. Have you had a final meeting with the Prime Minister? Have you put any particular agenda items to her? No, I met her, Paul and I met her and Tim at the Lodge a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I played her the Earth song on the piano. I don't think, I, I, I think I've said that before. Um, but it was a very, a very pleasant meeting and, and I told her how much I'd been uh, um, grateful to her for keeping a word on the uh, arrangements we'd made back there in 2010. Are you expecting to lift your number of MPs in the federal parliament at the next election? Oh yes, I think so. Uh, if, we, if that 14% uh, in two polls in the last week holds true, there'll be more, there'll be three more senators for a start, but there'll be more Greens in the parliament, but a long way to go till the next election. Day of what's being described as a dirt unit operating out of the Prime Minister's office. Now, the opposition leader says that they are digging dirt. The Prime Minister says it's legitimate research. I wonder what you, where you think the line should lie between uh, dirt digging and legitimate research, and what do you think of backgrounding uh, on your colleagues as a, as a tactic in politics? I, I think dirt files are shocking. I just, uh, I'm disgusted by them. I've never kept any. I know Erica Betts has got one this big on me, uh, and uh, the opposition uh, is shameless in it. But I think people are pretty sick of it out there. Um, in, instead of uh, that, let's have some clean politics uh, and uh, clean green politics, as far as I'm concerned. I, I just they speak for themselves. Uh, it's 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 not what we were elected to do. Bob, um, the uh, UN uh, Rio summit is on in Brazil uh, next week. Mm -hmm. They're looking at a uh, report card on 20 years of sustainable development and discussion across the globe. I mean, w what's your report card on, on how things have happened over the last 20 years? Well, in the last 20 years, um, we've added uh, much more than a billion people to the planet. The average consumption has gone up. Uh, the destruction of species ha is, has reached uh, unprecedented levels, never before seen in human history, at our hand. The planet has warmed to the warmest decade at least for a thousand years, but probably uh, in all of human history. And uh, we've still got half to one billion people living in abject poverty, while a trillion dollars a year is being spent on armaments. Uh, it's, it's backwards. And um, when you see uh, the way in which uh, the, every country uh, is pressured by the greed brigade, uh, you can see why that's going backwards. And um, I'll be talking at a seminar in, in Sydney tomorrow. Um, I'm going to say this sort of vote because there might be some of those commentators uh, that had a go last time around here about it, about global democracy. Uh, that is everybody having uh, equality on the face of the planet 
Now, I know that's no-go, particularly for the Murdoch uh, commentators, but that's what I represent. And, and I think we have to all live together on this planet and with this planet, and we're doing a very poor job of it at the moment. And, uh, but that's why I love being in the, in the fray. We've got uh, a lot of good things to be working on, and that's one of them. Because inequality, you get security. Senator, why, why have the Greens asked their supporters for $100,000 before the end of the financial year? Are they short of funds? Um, yes, we're short of funds, uh, and we'd like a lot more. And uh, your donation would be welcome. $100,000? How modest of them. I saw that uh, Clive Palmer was, had given... Uh, much more than that to the Queensland campaign. Come on, uh, lift the rate. I'd like to see more than that go to the Greens. Would making another a similar sort of donation at, ahead of the next election? Sorry. Uh, are you hopeful of Graham Wood making a similar sized donation to the one he made at the last oh, election? You, would the Greens accept it, Senator? Uh, well, that's a hypothetical. But let me say that if uh, anybody wants to give a large donation to the Greens, my address is Post Office Box 83 Signet, uh, and I'd be very happy to go as a middle person to help more Greens get into this Parliament. Uh, as for Graham Woods, I'll be eternally grateful for his generosity. There is a philanthropist who's got humanity uh, at heart, a, a really great Australian citizen. Senator Bad man, Senator. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you see, I think uh, uh, I'm being questioned here uh, by the Murdoch media about whether the Greens should have donations. All I can yeah, say is they should worry. He's Fairfax, actually. So. Uh, Fairfax uh, and Fairfax, both of them. Senator, uh, Senator, has, your departure, has your departure impacted on the Greens' ability to raise funds? Yes. Uh, if my departure has led to an increase in the polls for the Greens, I expect their ability to raise money has gone up as well. Uh, and anyway, they'll have one extra parliamentary donor. That's me. I'll be very happy to uh, help them out. Senator, um, Greg Barnes <laughs> has said today that um, Tony Abbott's been clever with words to say that the Howard government didn't have a similar sort of dirt unit, um, that they, they operated the government members' secretariat, um, both sides of politics do this essentially. Is it time for both sides to commit to actually stopping spending taxpayers' money on these sorts of units and is that something yes. the Greens should pursue? Uh, yes, it is time for that. I'm not going to give any injunctions to the Greens. I'm leaving. Uh, they, they will work that out for themselves, but it is. And you only have to look at the file that Eric Abetz used on Christine and I in his unsuccessful bid thrown out by the Privileges Committee to see uh, that they have, I mean, uh, they spend an inordinate time trying to get information against other members of Parliament. The electorate elects people into the Parliament to do their job, uh, not to be uh, at that level of uh, enmity, uh, hate and distrust of other members of Parliament. Get over it and get on with the positive job of giving a good outcome to voters. That's what I reckon the voters would go for. OK, we'll leave that there. That was a former Greens leader, Bob Brown, live from the Senate Courtyard at Parliament House in Canberra. That was one of the very last media conferences he'll hold there. He's handing in his resignation tomorrow, but says he'll continue campaigning with the Greens candidates until they put him in a box.